Hey everybody, this is John from johnsthomas.com and today we're going to be talking about installing WordPress. And we're going to be installing it on a cPanel. If you have a shared hosting account like with uh, say HostGator or Bluehost or DreamHost or one of those uh, hosting companies, even with GoDaddy now, um, you are probably on a cPanel install. cPanel is uh, pretty straightforward. You have a bunch of options and that's that. So I'm going to show you uh, the right way to install WordPress. Now, a lot of people will just take you into the cPanel. You'll click Fantastico, you'll click WordPress, and you'll install it that way. I'm going to show you the right way to do it, and that is giving you full control over your WordPress install. So if you click Download WordPress, it'll take you to the screen, and then you can click Download WordPress 3.9.1. Chances are, by the time you're watching this, it's going to change to 3.9.2 or 4 or whatever uh, the next release is. So if you just go to wordpress.org slash download, you get to this page, you can go ahead and click here, go ahead and click save file, and it's pretty quick. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you, it's in my downloads folder, uh, under downloads, go ahead and close that. And the next step is, um, I've got this site set up, it's quicknichesite.com, and if I type in quicknichesite.com slash cPanel, it takes me to the cPanel install. This URL will change um, once you get to it, usually, depending on how it's set up. Now, we are in the main admin. Now, if I click File Manager, it'll pop me up this. If you don't ever want to see this again or it's different, uh, make sure that it's set to web root and public HTML, uh, show hidden files and dot files, and you can skip this question in the future so you don't ever have to see it again. So go ahead and click Go. It'll bring open this panel. And right now I have an index file that just says, hello world, as you can see here. Um, and that's really just uh, a stupid way for me to keep track of it. I'm gonna click upload. I'm gonna click browse. And I'm gonna go to my downloads again and find that WordPress 3.9.1. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add that in there. And down here, you'll see that it's starting the upload and it takes a second or two and then it's complete. And you can just go ahead and click back. Once we're back here, you're gonna click reload and you'll see it there. And then just go ahead and click extract. This is gonna take out all the files from WordPress. And cPanel has this funny way of doing this, but it adds it to the WordPress directory. So if you double click in there, you can click select all you right click and click move you can take out this wordpress install here and go ahead and click move files you'll see them disappear you go up one level and now you're back in here here's that wordpress folder again we're going to go ahead and delete that and we're going to delete the readme because we don't need that and we're going to delete this wordpress 3.9.1 zip file as well Okay, so that leaves us with this. Now I'm gonna go back to my cPanel install here, and the next step is to create a database. Now this is a lot easier than it sounds, but you are gonna to have to write this information down. So make sure that you have something like uh, Notepad installed, or uh, I'm gonna use Sublime Text, and we're just gonna type uh, WP1 for now. And I'm gonna click Next Step and I'm gonna click WP user and you can use password generator and this is where you're gonna to have to remember things um, the passwords kind of crazy so I'm gonna go ahead and copy it and I'm gonna go ahead and paste it right here um, I'm probably going to get this database name here so that I don't forget it I'm just gonna go ahead and pop that in there And we're gonna have a database user as well. Once we click create this here. Okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give it all privileges. Um, you don't need to do this. And in a later video, we're gonna talk about revoking privileges and the only privileges that this user actually needs. But for now, we'll click on all privileges, click next step. And it's gonna say quick niche user has privileges on database one and you can return home. If I go back to quicknichesite.com, 
I haven't removed the index.html file yet, so let me go ahead and do that real quick. Here it is, and I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. Make sure that you leave the index.php. That's the um, file that is required by WordPress. So now if I come back and I click enter, I'm still getting the hello world because of a caching issue. We're gonna go to WP Admin. So you just type in WP Admin right after quicknet or your domain name.com and click create configuration file. We already know this information, so we're gonna go ahead and click let's go. And for the database name, we have that right here. That's this, this name here is the database. And then we need the username, which is my WP user. And then the last is the password. Okay, so mine's localhost. Um, this says WP and you can change this to whatever you want it to be. Um, one of the advantages of changing it is it's a little harder for certain hackers to hack it for certain exploits, um, but it's not necessary. Uh, there are plugins that will do this for you after the fact, but I don't recommend it. I would recommend going ahead and changing it now. I am going to go ahead and change it to quick niche site, qns.com, and I'm gonna click submit. And all right, Sparky, made it through this part of the installation. Now we can run the install wizard, and it's gonna ask me for the site title, which I'm going to say is quick niche site and the username I'm just gonna go ahead and type admin um, please use something other than admin uh, in a later video I'm gonna show you how to remove the admin user and change it to something else so we're gonna go ahead and add a password here I'm just gonna do something simple for me to remember all right that'll work and my email, I'm just going to go ahead and put jt at johnsthomas.com. Okay. So after I'm done, we're going to get to this login screen. And I'm just going to go ahead and type in the username and password. And that should let me in. Okay. So now that I'm in WordPress, I can go ahead and customize it with settings, posts, pages, themes, plugins, and a bunch of other things. In the next video, we are going to start talking about configuration, and then we'll be talking about plugins and different themes to use. So I hope you enjoyed, and take care.